what would you think if we told you we had a landing at Holloman Air Force Base of an alien craft, and it was filmed by our temporary duty guys? President Richard Milhouse Nixon's interest in UFOs is harder to calculate. I've talked to people who claim they talked to Nixon about UFOs. He was very interested. There was a rumored story that he had a huge UFO book collection, which I was never able to substantiate. Many UFO researchers believe Nixon received specific briefings, information he may have wanted to take public. There's some very good indications that he planned to reveal data. That UFOs, past, present, and future, a book by Robert Emenegger, a uh, television program that was done with that title. I talked to Emenegger, and he got asked by the Republican Party to produce that show using only government people, because the idea was they were going to release data. Bob Emenegger was an advertising executive and television producer who happened to know an important man inside the Nixon White House. Bob Halderman was someone I knew from UCLA Beta House, which is a fraternity. Then, as you know, he went on to be chief of staff under Nixon. In the mid-1970s, Emenegger and his partner researched military stories for their TV production at Norton Air Force Base's film archives. Paul Shardle is the one who took us in there and said, what would you think if we told you we had a landing at Holloman Air Force Base of an alien craft, and it was filmed by our TDY our temporary duty guys, and the film was sent here to Norton, where all films usually are sent. And I thought, this sounds outrageous, that, uh, you know, uh, UFOs and all. He said, well, look, if you're interested, uh, check with the Pentagon, but bury those under those other projects because it's a red flag to get into the subject of UFOs. George Weinbrenner was the commander of foreign technology. He has a private bunker down at Wright-Patterson. I went down the long hall, I could see all the little uh, cameras, surveillance cameras, walked right up to his desk and said, I want to ask you, what about the landing of an alien craft at Holloman Air Force Base? And I sort of expected him to say, what? The what? He didn't. So he reached up, pulled out a book, handed it to me. So I opened the book up and I said, to my friend, Colonel George Weinbrenner, signed Dr. Alan Hynek, and the book was all on UFOs. Well, Hynek was the, the uh, scientific advisor to the Air Force at that time on UFOs. Perplexed, Emenegger contacted his friend and Nixon's chief of staff, Bob Haldeman. He was at the White House. And I asked if he had heard anything about the landing at Holloman Air Force Base. And he said, well, I heard something, but I don't know. Whether the president knew, I have no idea. While Emenegger never obtained the Holloman film for the 1974 nationally broadcast program, his firsthand experience provides researchers insight on what American presidents may have known about UFOs. A friend of mine helping me out talked to two ex-presidents. They both confirmed that they had been shown the Holloman Air Force Base film. Let's look at an incident that might happen in the future, or perhaps could have happened already. The premise is that contact is made by extraterrestrial beings with representatives of the United States Air Force at Holloman Air Force Base in the deserts of New Mexico. The day is clear. It's about 5.32 a.m. at Holloman Air Force Base. Traffic light. One recon plane is on the field ready for takeoff when Sergeant Mann is given a report of an approaching unidentified craft. Yeah, Bill, uh, no, nothing on board. I'll repeat it again. Uh, unidentified approaching objects on Fort May 49er, 34 degrees southwest, while in range. Uh, probably a stray civilian, maybe. Uh, keep me Check with Edwards. Make contact with him, Bill. Uh, this is Holloman Air Force Base Control Tower. Identify yourself. What's your tail number? You are approaching on military airspace. Two military interceptors are dispatched to escort the unidentified crafts out of the area. During a routine photographic mission, 
A tech sergeant and staff sergeant of the base photographic team were aboard a helicopter at the time and run off several feet of film of the three objects, one of which breaks away and begins a descent. A second high-speed camera crew on the ground runs off approximately 600 feet. The cameras continue to roll as the extraordinary vehicle comes into view. It hovers almost silently about 10 feet off the ground for nearly a minute and yaws like a ship at anchor, then sets down on three extension pads. Commander and two officers, along with two base Air Force scientists, arrive and wait apprehensively. A panel slides open on the side of the craft, stepping forward, one, then two, and a third, what appear to be men dressed in tight-fitting jumpsuits, perhaps short by our standards, with an odd blue-gray complexion, eyes set far apart, a large pronounced nose. They wear a headpiece that resembles a rope-like design. The commander and the two scientists step forward to greet the visitors. Arrangements are made by some sort of communication, and the group quickly retires to an inner office in the King One area. Left behind stand a stunned group of military personnel. Who the visitors are, where they're from, and what they want is unknown.